This is the Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA, a weekly recap of your Philadelphia Eagles and news around the NFL. Broadcasting live from Chickies and Pete's, tonight's show is brought to you by Rob's Automotive and Collision, BCWSA, Chickies and Pete's, Allstate Fairless Hills Tom LaCroix, Penworth Financial Services, Penn Community Bank, Capital Grill, Ventresca's LTD, Independence Blue Cross, and SEPTA. We now go live to Chickies and Pete's for the Pro Football Report, presented by BCWSA. Now, here are your hosts, Delaware County Times Birds reporter Bob Groats and voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese. Hi, everybody. Thank you, and welcome to Chickies and Pete's. We are at Chickies and Pete's in Warrington. We have a great crowd here tonight. We have a great guest here tonight. Bob Groats is not here tonight. He is on assignment. That sounds official, doesn't it? On assignment. Yes. And we have replaced Bob Groats with my spotter and a guy who has been part of the football and all sports media, former producer of Channel 6, Channel 10. He has spotted millions of games uh, throughout the National Football League and college football. Bill Werndale. Billy, nice to have you. I, it's a real pleasure to be with you, Morrill, tonight. And we have a great guest tonight. Rick Lovato, an unsung hero on that Eagles team. Well, Rick Lovato is an Eagle for how many years now, Rick? Uh, going on seven years right now. Seven, seven years? Seven years, yep. That's amazing. That's amazing. Long snappers generally have wonderfully long careers. I mean, John Dorenbos was there for, do you know, what was he? He was at one time the longest tenured Eagle. Yes, he was there from, I, I believe, 2006 or seven till uh, 2017. So, I mean, gosh, he might have had... I, I know Jason Kelsey just had, I think, one of the most consecutive games as yeah, an Eagle. Yeah, 145. But I, and I'm pretty sure John Dorenbos was pretty close to that before uh, before his injury, before I came here in uh, 2016. So, yeah, it's been uh, quite the ride here, and I think I'm the only the third long snapper in about 23 years here because Mike Bartram before him was here Mike for a Bartram. long time. Was here for a long Did time you ever as well. meet Mike Bartram? Yeah, he was on the coaching staff a couple years ago, so it was great to be able to talk to him and, and learn, you know, how different the game was back then for him as a long snapper back when, you know, he could get hit and th how protected I am now compared to what it used to be back then. But uh, yeah, it's been uh, quite the journey to be able to meet those two guys that have been the long snappers for the last 20 now, years. Now, see, Mike Bartram was also a tight end. Yes, he was. So it wasn't exclusive that he was a long snapper. But I remember once, uh, Channel 10, I don't know if Billy was at Channel 10 at the time, they did a feature on Mike Bartram where they moved him around town and they had him snapping into a mailbox, snapping into a big wastebasket, snapping into a basketball hoop. Have you ever tried things like that? Yeah, I try that. <laughs> when when I was in high school, I tried a few of those videos. I snapped a basketball full court into a into a hoop. Did uh, you really? Yeah. <laughs> the length of a court? The length of the court into wow. the hoop, and then. Uh, but yeah, well, I I remember seeing that that Bartram video, and and I'm like, gosh, this is so cool. And like, who, who like who knew that people cared about where you could long stab it, how you can long stab it, but. He was so accurate. I, I think I remember seeing a few videos of him snapping it through a car window, like through the other side and everything like that. It's uh, pretty impressive, you know, how, how accurate all these long snappers have been, you know, throughout throughout time, you know, and uh, because it just became a specialized position in the last 20 years. Yeah. Where it's just, just me as a long snapper on the team and, and being on a roster spot with just a long snapper and not playing tight end like Mike Bartram did. So pretty pretty crazy that how how it's developed over the years i remember the eagles had a, and billy might remember this they had a long snapper forever whose name was mara sunatoa okay do you know that name i don't know if i know that name billy do you remember him vaguely 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 bro. he was a, he was the first time i ever remember them having an exclusive long snapper that's all he did and i think he went to the jets after that is that right but he he had a he was here for about 20 years wow i mean it was just a given that morris was going to be here how did you become a long snapper did you yeah, looking at you you're an athlete so i know you had to play another position in high school yeah so i played defensive end and center uh in high school i was a, l a little bit on the smaller side so i wasn't being recruited to play defensive end on or center 
Uh, so I, f I gave long snapping a try because one, I played center and I already did it, you know, on fourth down just because I could. I could throw it between my legs better than anyone else could. So I'm like, all right, let me give this a try. And once I found out that there was uh, all these long snapping camps where you could learn an, learn a technique. and There are long snapping camps. Long snapping camps on how to just long snap. And, you know, it's actually a huge business. There's a few guys out there. Uh, Rubio long snapping, Gary's Honor. Um, Cole's kicking. There's so many different areas you can go to Isn't and just amazing? learn long snapping. Um, and yeah, it became, again, it, this became a huge thing about 15, 16 years ago. Um, right before I started uh, going to these camps, it became very, very popular. Now you're seeing these camps with about 100 kids at each camp, and they have them all over the country. That is amazing. Did you know that? I, I knew they had camps because of my, my wife's uh, nephew went to one of your camps and i think you taught him he was uh, from upstate uh, uh right around west point yes yeah, and he, yeah. he met you and he, he he said snapping and it really is an art now you do individual uh sessions don't you i've done individual sessions in the past uh not so much now that i've been in the nfl but it's uh it's been great to go back and help younger kids and teach them uh, i've done it a few times throughout my my career here, uh, I've gone out to Arizona to help some some college kids trying to get their way into the NFL, uh, and I've done some camps uh, here and there in New Jersey because that's uh, where I started going to, to camps in New Jersey, where I'm from, uh, helping out a, a small uh, special teams group called Special Team Solutions, uh, probably where I met him. And uh, yeah, I've just been trying to give back the, the things I've learned at all these camps that I've been to, to younger kids who are trying to learn. Uh, and I look forward to doing that when I'm done playing as well. Isn't that amazing? That is, it's, a, it's a whole second career. A whole second career of being able to teach kids, you know, this very unique art that uh, really isn't, you know, the most popular position. But there's a lot of kids out there that can do it better than most. And you can get scholarships to go to college for it. And that's that's big. Why Why not? have a kid like myself you know who earned a scholarship just to long snap so you know what's interesting i i wonder if many of these long snapping gurus guys who run the camps were long snappers themselves because or just somebody who studied it and learned how to teach it and the reason i bring that up is because one of the and billy will know this name too one of the most well-known quarterback coaches passing game coaches is a guy named tom house out in California, I believe Jalen Hurts has worked with him. Oh wow! And he was a baseball pitcher. Oh, he was, was never a quarterback, right? Billy? Absolutely, and he caught Henry Aaron's 715th home run. No way! Yeah, yes, Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Yeah, and, and he was in the bullpen. In the bullpen, yep, he caught the home run. Wow! So a pitcher became yep. one of the best. Quarterback pa football Co yeah. <laughs> coaches he, in the, in the he's country. He's out of San Diego, California. I wow. worked out there for 12 and a half years. And I never crossed paths with him, but a lot of people, the mutual friends, knew Tom House. And he has developed a lot of uh, quarterbacks, a lot of pitchers, the way he teaches the throwing methods. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, and long snapping is very similar, too. Uh, Gary Zahner, who I go to, was a, a special teams coordinator for at least 15 to 20 years in the NFL uh, with the Ravens and the Vikings and a couple other teams. And uh, he never long snapped, but he obviously was around long snapping and he became he realized that there wasn't enough teaching out there to to go around and you know teach these kids how to how to long snap the proper way so once it became so you know critical in the nfl um he became a long snapping coach a kicking coach and a punting coach and he's so good at doing all three so it's it's quite impressive uh you know a guy who never long snapped but can teach it very very well do people at the eagles work with you now you are under the category of special teams and that would be Michael Clay is the special teams coach. But I wonder, does Michael Clay work on technique at all with somebody like you or Jake Elliott or just make sure your times are right and everything is going smoothly? Yeah, Clay's got a big job with worrying about every single um, special teams group that going on kickoff return, kickoff, everything like that. So he's always there for us whenever we need him. Uh, he's always around, and he knows his stuff about kicking and punting. But we also have Tyler Brown who's yeah. on the coaching staff, whose father is one of, uh, you know, the biggest uh, or snapping and kicking gurus. He's with the Ravens. Yeah, Randy uh, Brown. That Randy Brown, yes. He, he was also mayor of his town. <laughs> mayor of Jersey. the town, that's right, that's right. <laughs> and uh, he has turned his son into the same thing that, he, that he's doing with the Ravens. Um, you know, he's... 
He's one of the best. Tyler Brown is amazing. At, is he really? And knowing every detail about kicking, punting, long snapping. Uh, he's really studied everything that his dad has taught him uh, over the last, you know, 31 years, 32 years, however old, however old he is. He's been going to Ravens games his entire life uh, since his dad has been a coach there. And, yeah, I mean, obviously it's a great – great thing to have Justin Tucker over there who's been so good and now he has Jake Elliott to work with and you're talking about good. maybe the two best in football oh for sure absolutely so it's 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 crazy to you know think that those two guys are, are with teams that have such great specialist units which is you know and, and it goes to show how, how important they are to have because not every NFL coach knows a lot about specialists they know special teams but they don't know a lot about long snapping kicking or punting Merle, you know the first special teams coach in the NFL. You'll have him for a special guest in a couple weeks. Dick, Dick Vermeil. Vermeil. Dick Vermeil, that's right. Was the right. first special teams coach in 69, hired by George Allen. No way. And then yeah. how long after that did he become head coach? Uh, he became head coach at uh, UCLA. 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 And won okay. the Rose Bowl. Right. And then right after he won the Rose Bowl against heavily favored Woody Hayes in Ohio State, Leonard Tose, who was the Eagles owner at the time, went out to California and brought him back as wow. the Eagles head coach. Dick was... One of the youngest head coaches in football. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Now, 1.3 back on the field goal, is that the time? Uh, yes, 1.25 roughly, 1.3 is a field goal, and then you want to be right around two seconds or under on a punt. So, yeah, hmm. it's operation time has always been pretty consistent in the NFL, um, and obviously you want to be as quick as possible because – Guys are trying to block it. So. Well, I, I have heard coaches rave about you, the, the speed with which you get the ball back to the holder. Yeah, it's 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 key for me to get that ball back there smoothly where it's a catchable ball and also for him to be able to just catch the laces, which is another thing that you learn in these long snapping camps that you can cannot just throw it back there, but you can throw it enough rotations where he catches it in the same spot every time with the really? laces out so he doesn't have to turn them. Now, it's up to me to – try to be perfect every single time and throw it the same way every time not everyone's perfect but i i try to pride myself into giving him laces 90 percent of the time that i'm that i'm throwing him the ball and now how does jake like it does he like the laces away from where he kicks he usually likes it if we're on a hash he usually likes it pointing you know roughly towards uh one of the uprights uh brayden man has been doing a great job since he came here uh, of holding and uh, he, he does a great job. And it's more so about the angle of the ball for Jake. Jake likes likes it really more up and down, where some kickers like it leaned a little bit towards the holder, uh, which is, you know, another tiny little detail that a lot of, you know, people don't know about kicking. How many times during the course of a week do you snap the ball back? Oh, that's a great question. I'd say on, on our majority of our work days, Wednesday and Thursday, it's got to be at least 100-plus each day. Um, because we're starting with field goal every day. Jake gets his kicks in, and then we go right into punt. And, uh, gosh, that's another you know 40 to 50 snaps before we, we even start our period. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a lot during the week, but we kind of shut it down. Our, our, you know, we do a great job of keeping our bodies fresh Friday, Saturday, and going into Sunday uh, being ready for the game. You know, I have to admit that I was worried – when the Eagles change punters. Now, first of all, I like Darren Sippus. You, you yeah. become friendly with these guys, and you hate to see them exactly leave. Exactly right. But you realize that it's a business, and teams do what they have to do to have the production that they want. And Aaron had been injured a year ago and then right. had trouble coming back and then had a bad game, and that was it. Right. But I was concerned about the, the operation going from you to the new holder, who turned out to be Brandon Mann, and then Jake getting the comfort level – where, the, where everything was still going to work. And yet you guys made that almost seamlessly. What was the solution? Uh, you know, it's really just about getting to know Braden off the field and on the field. And, and just he learns little tendencies about how I snap. He lear We learn little tendencies about how he holds. Uh, and he's just been super reliable. He's very consistent with how he holds the ball. Uh, he's he's very good. His hands are incredible. Uh, and it's been an easy transition. I'm, 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 I think... So Jake and him have the same agent, and I believe they've worked together in the past before, just briefly in camps and, and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, once you get to learn, uh, you know, a new operation, it's, it's just about being consistent and, uh, you know, 
really knowing that person and how they're going to hold the ball, how they how they are off the field, everything like that is, you know, important. Chemistry is so important between specialists. Who is the best or the best special teams opponents in the National Football League for you? Uh, overall yeah, special overall, teams? Yeah. yeah, so the Jets were actually, I believe, ranked in the top three special teams that, that we played, and they, they uh, covered the punts against us uh, on Sunday very well. Uh, you could see Covey couldn't really get anything going on on punt return no, because they didn't give them an inch how well they were they were covering and uh, you know they they are phenomenal um the I, I think the ravens the ravens are usually pretty good but it's uh you know we, the dallas cowboys always give us a tough time as well there's a lot of you know divisional opponents um even washington has a great special teams unit as well so it's um, it's close, and it's all just a matter of like a yard or two in averages between every single um, you know average of the special teams in the NFL. So like one yard of, of punt average could be could put you either first in the NFL or 16th. It's it's crazy how one punt yard average could could change really? that little in between. So like we pride ourselves in trying to you know net a certain amount of yards every single every single game because uh, that puts us up towards the top same thing with return yards and everything like that covey has been outstanding Amazing. and I, th- I think he averages the most out of any other returner in the nfl right now so i think has since the sixth week of last year that's right exactly right yeah he's been unbelievable and and people don't realize even getting i think over five yards is is uh, higher than any average in the NFL. So, I know. Yeah. In fact, last year he averaged nine yards, which was greater than the rookie season of Darren Sproles and Danny Amendola. Yeah. I mean, guys who were known that's as right. great punt returners. That's right. And because everyone, you know, thinks, you know, oh, you need the big, you know, touchdowns. And, and Darren Sproles was fantastic at returning. And uh, we hope that, you know, Covey can soon – do that for us oh he'll break he's, one. he's good he, he, he is close we just need it's it's crazy to see how we're one block away almost every time from scoring a touchdown it's 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 just that you know game of inches it really is a game of inches the other thing rick lovato that's interesting is that you need a head coach who really values special teams that's, obviously that's nick siriani does and you talked about uh, randy brown who's in in the baltimore well his head coach john harbaugh was a long-time special, special teams, teams coach. coach and golf partner for me, by the <laughs> way, uh, on the in Eagles. Philly, yeah, yeah, in Philly. Yeah, yeah that's right. Eagles. That's right. Yeah, P- people who pride in, in knowing special teams is so important, uh, you know, because some of the best teams out there, you know, are the best teams because of their special teams. So, Rick Lovato is our guest, and we will return with more right after this. Hi, it's Pete from Chicky and Pete's, and we are prouder than ever to partner with the Philadelphia Eagles. Chickie and Peach has been named the official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, and we continue to serve as the official caterer of both Eagles training camp and the official caterer of the First Trust Bank Club at Lincoln Financial Field. Go where the players go. The official sports bar of the Philadelphia Eagles, Chickie's Pete's. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League champion Phillies, and here's the pitch. BCWSA water and sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net, bcwsa, prove it. Hi, it's Merle. Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa is here to help you distress after the game. Visit them to restore, relax, or refresh with a much-needed massage or facial for an introductory price starting at just $79.95. They offer an abundance of facial and massage services. Visit any one of their 60 spas in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley, or go to handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. Planning to go to the game? Give limotoday.com a call. You'll get to the game and back safely and in style. 
Why worry about the traffic and parking when you can relax and let LimoToday.com do the driving for you and your friends? And if you book a five-hour trip with LimoToday.com, you'll get the six-hour free. From sedan to minibuses to vans and stretch limos, let LimoToday.com get you to the game. Give them a call at 1-866-LIMO-TODAY. That's 1-866-LIMO-TODAY. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive and Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat-screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. At Penn Community Bank, we're not just your bankers, we're your neighbors. That comes in handy when you're purchasing your first place, refinancing an existing mortgage, buying a second home or investment property, or looking to tap into your home's equity. Whatever your situation, we pair the latest products, services, and technology that you need with the experienced banking professionals you want. Visit PennCommunityBank.com or stop by your local branch to find out how we can make your family's growth personal. Penn Community Bank. Here we are and here we grow. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. The life of an Eagles fan is a wild ride. Some years we triumph, some years we don't. What never changes year after year is how we get to the game, shoulder to shoulder with our fellow fans on SEPTA. And this season, fans ride home free from NRG Station on the Broad Street Line thanks to Unibet, an official casino and sportsbook partner of the Philadelphia Eagles. Plan your trip to the game and learn more about free rides home sponsored by Unibet at iSEPTAPhilly.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for the Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA. Once again, here's your host, Delaware County Times Birds reporter Bob Groats and voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese. Billy Werndell in for Bob Groats tonight, and you are listening to Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA right here on 1490 WBCB and 107.3 FM and seen live on YouTube by searching WBCB Sports. Rick Lovato is our guest, the Eagles long snapper. And Billy, you were going to ask Rick about the, the surfaces that you play on. Yes, a lot of debate among the Players Association and the league about the field turf compared to natural turf. And you guys would like to see all the fields be natural turf, correct? Correct, yeah. It's been expressed by a lot of different players uh, about how that truly affects the way that they play, the way that they prepare for a game, um, knowing that you can get hurt on a very simple, you know, a very simple play is is frustrating, you know, we're we're out there trying to perform at our best and we have to worry about a football field and then surface. Uh, I, I, I've never seen a, you know, a turf field um, be what what players want to want to play on, especially outdoors. So, uh, being on a grass surface, especially at home uh, in in Philly, is you know makes things easier on everybody. The, the way that they choose their cleats, you know, preparing for the game, uh, it, it, it's it's very frustrating knowing that there's so many people and so many players out there knowing that they have to deal with that and uh, they haven't made any changes. And I really don't understand it. You know what's amazing to me, Rick? Uh, artificial turf. Uh, has been used for over 50 years. Yeah. I, I believe the, the first place that ever used artificial turf for a professional game in a major sport was the Houston Astrodome. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they did it because it was the Astrodome, right. and they had to have artificial turf. Of course. But you would think that in 50 years, they would, with all the billions of dollars involved in research, that they would be able to come up with an artificial turf that would be acceptable and not more dangerous. Yeah, I, and again, it's it's crazy to see how how cleats have changed. You know, on that um, 
and in Houston, I'm sure I think those guys were playing in almost like just shoes because they it, they couldn't wear cleats on the on the on the hard astro turf. It was uh, like just a shoe that they almost like a just a tennis shoe that they wore because the surface was too thin. Whereas now guys are so used to wearing these molded cleats uh, that. They want to be able to, you know, rip up grass a little bit. Whereas if your foot gets caught in turf, it gets stuck, and then grass is going to rip out with the with the dirt, with everything. So it's it's interesting that, you know, you like you said, Merrill. You, you, I don't know how we haven't figured out artificial turf yet. It's amazing. I, it, it, yeah, with the amount of money that goes into, you know, all the leagues, and not and not just, you know, the NFL, soccer, baseball, everything. Um, you know, how, how we haven't figured that out yet. Now, I had an orthopedist many years ago say to me that knowing the dangers of the artificial turf, a lot of the wide receivers would still stay with the artificial turf because it gives them more speed, and they will still use the cleats that could get them into trouble, but it, they grip better and they get more speed, that they will trade the dangers for more speed. That would make a, yeah, it makes sense because of the harder surface they could easily, you know, uh, you know, power through that compared to grass where it's a little bit softer, you know, you're not going to be able to make uh, as, you know, as as hard of a, a push off on a softer surface like grass than you would be able to on, on an artificial surface, which is typically harder. You have the rubber, you have the, the fake artificial grass, and then usually, I don't usually know what goes underneath it, but it's not, not like a, you know, a very thick uh, padding, so. Now, Rick, when you snap on grass compared to a uh, field turf, how, how much different is that? It's not so much different for me when, I, when it comes to snapping, but I do find that on artificial turf that when I'm holding the ball there, because I prop the ball up just a little bit, that the nose of the ball will slide on art artificial turf because of how slippery it is. Whereas grass, you're not going to get that because you're you're playing with on on natural grass. It's not going to be slippery unless it's wet. Whereas I find that on uh, on a dry day on artificial turf, the ball can slide just a little bit, and that can affect my you know my mindset going right before a snap. If the ball's sliding, I'm like, okay, well, why is this ball moving right now? But um, you know, it's just little things like that. That again. As a player, you don't want to have to worry about, but we have to deal with it almost, you know, three or four times a year, especially with MetLife being uh, an outdoor stadium with artificial turf, Dallas indoor stadium with artificial turf. Um, yeah, there's a lot of fields out there that just, you know, you have to deal with, and it's surprising with, again, how much money goes in the NFL, why most fields can't be grass. Now, this just, just came to my mind because to this day, there are people who are still angry about the fact that at the Super Bowl last year, Super Bowl 59, the, the, turf, the turf was so bad that you saw the Eagles, who were a great sacking team, mm -hmm. slipping and sliding. They could not get the, the shoes to catch to give them the push-off that they needed. Hassan Reddick, who had 19 and a half sacks last year, yep. including the playoffs, never got to the quarterback. That's right. And we were the first ones to go out there. On Thursday, we were able to use the, the field uh, to go kick on and usually specialists like to go to the field that they're playing on a few days early to go test out the surface uh, It was Jake's second warm-up kick. He slipped out completely under his ankles because he couldn't and he was norm wearing his normal cleats that he would on any other surface and he just slipped right out off of the and he's like he had no idea what happened because that surface was so different than anything else we had played on because it wasn't artificial, but it was re it was like a synthetic grass and with no uh, it wasn't like a, a thick dirt underneath it because you couldn't catch your your cleat in anything. And we warned guys going into the game that we you know we didn't know what cleat that you guys should wear, but we're we're telling you right now you're going to be be slipping out there, which then we found out on on that game day that guys would be slipping all over the field. Uh, I mean and. It, Again, we both had to play on that, but still, why experiment with something so, you know, interesting before a big game like that? When Arizona, we played there earlier in the in the year, and yeah. had, had no issue. You didn't have an issue. No right. issue. Now, right. shouldn't the league, with the with the two weeks between the last uh, playoff game and the Super Bowl, be able to go out there and test it and make any adjustments? Yeah, and I, and I don't think it should just be the league. I think there should be a, a talk between both teams competing yeah because we have a very respectable uh um field uh surface um owner or uh tony tony, tony, tony leonard yes tony leonard uh he 
prides himself on going and testing out every single surface. You're telling me you can't have him and the Chiefs, uh, you know, surface guy come together and, and agree on something that they're going to change completely that no one has ever played with before? It's mind-boggling that, that – the NFL gets to make that decision, but our guys can't talk about that together. Yeah. And again, it could be a mutual thing between two teams. If you're going to test out something different, at least have it, you know, go through those guys. Billy, I think at one time, I don't know anymore, the Chiefs had a very, very famous guy in charge of George field, Toma. George Toma. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the, the field doctor. Now, he was out field there, yep. 94 years old. He was out there. And everybody said it was George Toma. No, it wasn't George Toma. It was the NFL that made that decision on that turf. Because as you said, you played it on it earlier in the season. Why would it change so dramatically? That, that's the big question. Why would it be? Why would you even fool around with it? Right. And there's no issue with it before. No, so exactly. Why, so why change it? I, I don't understand. Rick Lovato is our guest, and Rick, it's it's been a tough. It, it's, oh, we're getting a. Okay, we're okay. Time wise. Uh, we're get, it's it's so unbelievable that, that the Eagles I, I did a little commentary about the fact that the Phillies announcers Tom McCarthy and Scott Fransky uh, are fortunate in that the Phillies along with the good things lost 72 games this year and some of them were excruciating losses. The right. Eagles were rolling along with win, 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 win and suddenly lost one to the Jets and a lot of people start screaming you know the sky is falling, the sky is falling <laughs> But it's, it's not. It's one game. That's right. And I, it was the same deal as last year. We were the last team in the NFL that was undefeated, and we lost to Washington. Uh, and we couldn't believe that we had lost to Washington. But it was a big wake-up call. And people have to realize there's a long season ahead of us, and we have some really tough football games to play. So I think, yes, we, we understand that, you know, that was a team that we should have beat, but we know that we're better than that. We know we're going to fix our mistakes, and we're going to be our better football team because we know – who we are as a team, we, we still have so many key guys that you know can make amazing plays happen. We just have to believe that we can do that every single week. All right, we're going to take a break and be back with Rick Lovato right after this. Hi, Merrill Reese, voice of the Eagles, inviting you to join me and a different Eagles guest every week for Pro Football Report, presented by BCWSA. Listen to the show on both 1490 WBCB and 107.3 FM from a different Chickies and Pete's location near you. Pro Football Report, presented by BCWSA, every Tuesday night from 6 to 7, right here on 1490 WBCB and 107.3 FM. BCWSA customers, former Phillies pitcher Tommy Green here. I played on the 1993 National League Champs, so I know a thing or two about what it's like playing on a winning team. BCWSA has all the ingredients. They make it easy for their customers to get automatic updates by text, email, or phone anytime there is a disruption in your service area. You can even customize your alerts by going to bcwsa.net. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, your partner for a safer environment. BCWSA, proven. Hi, it's Merrill. Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa is here to help you distress after the game. Visit them to restore, relax, or refresh with a much-needed massage or facial for an introductory price starting at just $79.95. They offer an abundance of facial and massage services. Visit any one of their 60 spas in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley, or go to handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. Planning to go to the game? Give limotoday.com a call. You'll get to the game and back safely and in style. Why worry about the traffic and parking when you can relax and let limotoday.com do the driving for you and your friends? And if you book a five-hour trip with limotoday.com, you'll get the six-hour free. From sedans to minibuses to vans and stretch limos, let limotoday.com get you to the game. Give them a call at 1-866-LIMO-TODAY. That's one 866 limo today a flawless occasion begins at the capitol grill from the moment you step into the capitol grill located in the heart of center city the experience is one of comfortable elegance whether you're looking to host a private affair a perfect lunch stop or dinner destination start your occasion at the capitol grill today visit the capitalgrill.com or call 215 545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. 
Your day-to-day -day life is hectic between having to pick up the kids, make dinner, the countless other tasks that you got to get done. Rob's Automotive and Collision is there to make your life a whole lot easier. Make sure you take advantage of their spacious waiting rooms, the large flat screen TVs, complimentary coffee and muffins, and free Wi-Fi. So even when you do have to stop, Rob's is there to make you feel right at home. Give Rob's a call today at 215-826-9200 for any of your auto repair needs. At Penn Community Bank, we're not just your bankers, we're your neighbors. That comes in handy when you're purchasing your first place, refinancing an existing mortgage, buying a second home or investment property, or looking to tap into your home's equity. Whatever your situation, we pair the latest products, services, and technology that you need with the experienced banking professionals you want. Visit PennCommunityBank.com or stop by your local branch to find out how we can make your family's growth personal. Penn Community Bank. Here we are and here we grow. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for the Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA. Once again, here's your host, Delaware County Times Birds reporter Bob Groats and voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese. And Billy Warndell filling in for Bob Groats tonight. And it is time for this week's injury review brought to you by the attorneys at Begley, Carlin, and Mandio. Contact them today for a free consultation at 215-806-3689. That's 215-806-3689. Well, the injuries are pretty much, as uh, it, it's often said by Nick Sirianni, undetermined yet as, to, as, to, as far as who's going to be ready on Sunday night. Now, there was a, a report nationally that Lane Johnson's ankle injury is not as serious as originally thought, and there's a chance that he will play, and we certainly hope that's the case on Sunday night. I don't know, but I have a feeling, based on what uh, Nick Sirianni said last week, I have a feeling that Darius Slay will be back this week. I also think that Jalen Carter will be back this week. And also, based on the uh, just the appearance of things, I would be surprised uh, to see uh, Reed Blankenship back this week. I think that's going to take... Uh, a couple of weeks for the rib and whatever else is involved in that injury to heal. And Fletcher, and Fletcher, Cox. Fletcher Cox was passed this week. Last He's week, back. Yep. Yep. We mentioned We Dale. did. We, we mentioned yeah, Chris uh, Irma, our producer, trying to help us along. Then. <laughs> now, Merle, there's they a are main, back. the Eagles made a pretty They did. They made a big signing. acquisition today that surprised a lot of people. Uh, how about you, uh, Rick Lovato? Were you surprised to hear that a seven-time All-Pro 34-year-old wide receiver Julio Jones is the latest addition to the Eagles. That was a, a huge shock to me. You know, I, I didn't think that was uh, on our radar of, of picking up a player like Julio, who's been phenomenal throughout his entire career. But uh, I, I thought we were going to be looking all I, – I saw a report about how we looking all over for secondary, but uh, Julio Jones was not on my radar for, no. for uh, the guys we would acquire in the, in the last 24 hours. Well, how he knows who's out there. And last year when the Eagles needed help, he went out and he got Linval Joseph, and then he picked up Indomitian and Sue, and both of those guys played a role in the Eagles making it to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Those guys were fantastic. And, and having veteran guys like that in the locker room has always helped uh, any team that I've been on uh, go further because of their experience. You know, they have their position group guys that they can teach and understand the game better uh, because they're not there to really take anyone's job away or anything. They're, they're there to help the team win, and they want to win a championship just as bad as we do. You know, Billy has a lot of knowledge about the colleges, the, uh, the, the scouting of college, uh, college players. Years ago, Billy was one of the originators of a publication that has become very well known called Our Lad's Guide to the NFL Draft. And Billy was around the country scout, uh, doing spotting for these various network college telecasts. Mm -hmm. Billy, uh, you mentioned to me that you think there are some moves that the Eagles can still make and some still highly tatted players that can fill positions like safety. Well, one guy I'd like to see how he really make a concerted effort to obtain before the trade deadline. Carolina is going nowhere in a hurry. All right, they're, they're, they're done in the water. Jeremy Chin, it may cost you a little bit, but you have to solidify that secondary. And I think Chin would be the answer. You have to give up a second, maybe a, a future pick. I would do that. You have to upgrade 
that secondary because there's been a lot of mistakes in the secondary this season. You know, Rick, you mentioned the rat last <laughs> night watching the Phillies. That you and, and uh, Jake and and Braden were out there enjoying the Phillies game. That's right, uh, and it's great. And everyone talks about the Phillies and the fact that these guys have fun and they are such a family and that they are they, the chemistry of this team is unbelievably good. I'm in the locker room a lot. I get the feeling that this team has that same kind of camaraderie. Absolutely, and you, you see teams like that go the furthest uh, in, in any sport and in, in any, anything you watch. Teams that have that camaraderie, that have that, you know, just that everything they do is for each other, and I love that about the Phillies. Watching them last night was just an amazing thing to experience because you could see it in the fans, you could see it in the, in the dugout. Everyone was locked in on the same goal, and uh, we hope that that's the goal this year, as it is every year. But uh, teams are, are so special in that way. You know, last year we had a special team that did the same thing, and in 2017, the same thing. We had the best camaraderie. We had the best group of guys who had each other's backs, and the, and not only that, but you have a an entire city behind your back as well. Uh, who love to see guys just get along and, and do silly things together on the sidelines, celebrating after touchdowns. That's fun. That makes things fun, and it's a game, and we, it's supposed to be fun. So I, I want to ask you about one guy the Eagles brought in, a big cloud over him when they drafted up at number nine, Jalen Carter. And You've seen a lot of defensive linemen. How good can this kid be? This kid is a I, – I think – I know it's, it's, it's hard to say this now, but he's a – He's a future Hall of Famer. He is the most explosive D tackle I've seen next to Aaron Donald uh, for his size, and you know he is just unbelievably strong. I've watched him throw offensive linemen with ease, and the way he punched that ball out um, a couple weeks ago, you know, just the 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 mind he has for this game and the way he plays his position is so ruthless, but at the same time, you know, so unique and so beautiful to watch he is such a, a, an amazing d tackle that a lot of teams passed up on dick for is a good friend of ours and dick for is never a guy to over, go overboard but i heard dick for one friday morning doing a piece on wip and he referred to him as somebody who looks like a young richie white mm, absolutely and, and you're talking about maybe the best who ever played that position yeah, the way he throws guys like Reggie White did. It, I mean, obviously they play two different positions, but gosh, they, he the power he has and the ability he, he already makes. You know, he's clearly very motivated to play. He's you know he's never gonna not go in there and and give it his absolute all. So seeing that and seeing that he came, I think he came to the right place too. He's surrounded by guys that are gonna motivate him to be the best that he can be. And we can only hope that he keeps playing the way he has. Do you ever remember a team being put together with so many players from one college? I mean, people talk about this, this, this the, the Eagle Bulldogs. That's right. Because, the, you, because of all the University of Georgia stars you have in that locker room. That's right. Yeah, no, I, I know there's always been a lot of SEC guys because, of course, how, how could you not have those SEC guys? But they that, haven't had enough. But not, they have more yeah, now. That's right. And, and I think they had a culture in Georgia that uh, you know that motivated them to be like, why not take these guys, you know, off the board from the same school who already have that camaraderie, who can come in and immediately make an impact. Um, those guys are so motivated, and you could see it. You know, th they bring their friendship to everyone else on the team as well. It's not like those guys are just hanging out by themselves. They're also expanding their friendships along with everyone else who's already in the locker room. Uh, and you love to see that. You know, those guys are all very outgoing. Uh, Nolan Smith, uh, Jordan Davis, Nakobe, uh, Jalen, they're all r really easy guys to talk to. Keely Ringo? Keely Ringo, yes. Uh, yeah. Same thing. Easy guy to talk to. He's been great for us on special teams. And, and they're all young, and they're all still learning, and they can only get better. And I, I can see that they're going to be so great. What is it like for a long snapper to cover a punt? I mean, that's got to be a little hairy because – Bodies are flying all around. That's right. So yeah, it's it's tough. You know, you know, I'm I'm not expected to make the play, but uh, when I do, I, I'm I'm happy to make it. But it's uh, yeah, it's it's something like for me where they're not so worried about covering me. 
Uh, so I'm kind of open. I'm like playing like a, a free safety in the middle of the field, waiting for it to cut back into into the middle of the field, and uh, and that's when that's my opportunity to make a play. And uh, we haven't had too many field punts this year. We've had a lot of plus 50 punts, and uh, we haven't been averaging a lot of punts per game. So that's a good thing. Obviously, the offense is working, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a good thing when, when we're just punting plus 50s and trying to pin them deep because it's all about field position, and that's what punt is. Rick, I have to ask you about a play that you're not involved in, but it's the most talked about play in the NFL this year, and I'm talking about the quarterback sneak, which is known as the – used to be known as the tush push, and now people are saying, Merrill, please call it the brotherly shove the brotherly in shove. the city of brotherly love. <laughs> now, last night I was watching the Dallas – Chargers game. Yes. And at one point, Dallas went for it. They all got together and they tried to push and shove Dak Prescott and they didn't make it. And Troy Aikman, who was doing the game with Joe Buck, said, only the Eagles can make this play for some reason. What is your what is your explanation of why this play is so special for this team? I think it's a, a, a big thing that Nick takes huge pride in and it is not something that just happens. These guys have a, a whole sheet of details of what to do on, on this play and how to make it work every single time. Uh, and, and it is impressive. I, I, I honestly don't, don't know what goes into that entire sheet that they have uh, of the details. But it's that technical. But it's that technical because no other team you see in the NFL is doing it as well as us. Yes, we have some really big guys and some you know monsters on that off offensive line but the way Jalen can find a gap the way that Dallas and that uh, Kenny or Swift can push him in the right direction to get at just one yard and uh, they end up almost getting two almost every, every time they do so it's it's quite impressive to watch and uh, you know no one can figure it out I mean every every team that we've done it against has been unsuccessful in stopping it. So. Although I, I wonder how much it helps when you have a quarterback who can squat 500 pounds. Oh, yeah. I, I watched that film of, of Jalen squatting. I think it was 600-plus pounds 600, yeah. in, uh, in college. And, gosh, he is, again, a, such a such an athlete, so strong. So, you know, just everything about him is, is fantastic. All right, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back with Rick Lovato right after this. Pete from Chickie and Pete's, the official sports bar of your Philadelphia Eagles. Here's a winner, fall football and Chickie's and Pete's mouth-watering snow crab legs. For a limited time, buy one and get one free snow crab legs every Tuesday and Wednesday. Enjoy the sweet, delicate flavor of snowy white crab meat dressed in our special blend of seasonings and spices. Pair it with an ice-cold draft beer or one of our signature cocktails. Buy one and get one free snow crab legs every Tuesday and Wednesday for a limited time. Restrictions apply. Chickie's and Pete's. This is Tommy Green from the 1993 National League Champion Phillies. And here's the pitch. BCWSA Water and Sewer customers, you have a new and improved option to pay your bill that's convenient, reliable, and secure. Powered by Invoice Cloud, you can pay your bill 24-7 online, pay by text or phone, or sign up for auto pay to avoid fees for late or missed payments. Visit bcwsa.net to sign up or for more info. That's bcwsa.net. BCWSA, proven. Hi, it's Merrill. Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa is here to help you distress after the game. Visit them to restore, relax, or refresh with a much-needed massage or facial for an introductory price starting at just $79.95. They offer an abundance of facial and massage services. Visit any one of their 60 spas in Delaware, South Jersey, and Philadelphia, including the Lehigh Valley, or go to handandstone.com. Restrictions apply. See spa for details. Planning to go to the game? Give limotoday.com a call. You'll get to the game and back safely and in style. Why worry about the traffic and parking when you can relax and let limotoday.com do the driving for you and your friends? And if you book a five-hour trip with limotoday.com, you'll get the six-hour free. From sedan to minibuses to vans and stretch limos, let limotoday.com get you to the game. Give them a call at 1-866-LIMO-TODAY. That's 1-866-LIMO-TODAY. A flawless occasion begins at the Capitol Grill. From the moment you step into the Capitol Grill, located in the heart of Center City, the experience is one of comfortable elegance. Whether you're looking to host a private affair, a perfect lunch stop, or dinner destination, start your occasion at the Capitol Grill today. Visit thecapitalgrill.com or call 215 
215-545-9588. That's 215-545-9588 for the Capitol Grill, Center City. Ventresca Limited, the Delaware Valley men's store, is located in historic Doylestown. For casual clothing in denim to business suits and tuxedos, Ventresca Limited has a large selection you have to see to believe. The experienced and knowledgeable sales staff can show you the many brand labels that have made Ventresca Limited in Doylestown a must for men concerned about their image. Select from Canali, Brax Jeans, Hickey Freeman, Johnson Murphy Footwear, and much more. Custom alterations are free. Visit Ventresca Limited on the web at Ventresca.com. When an Eagles player gets hurt, the team takes care of him. When you get hurt, the attorneys at Begley, Carlin, and Mandio will take care of you. They understand that a severe accident can be a life-altering event. You need a reliable teammate to fight for you. The attorneys at Begley, Carlin, and Mandio will get you great results. And if there's no recovery, there's no fee. Contact them today at 215-750-0110 for a free consultation. 215-750-0110 for a reliable ally that's on your side. We now return to Chickies and Pete's for the Pro Football Report presented by BCWSA. Once again, here's your host, Delaware County Times Birds reporter Bob Groats and voice of the Philadelphia Eagles, Merrill Reese. And back we are here at Chickies and Pates in Warrington. Great crowd tonight, a lot of big fans. And Rick, you see that? You don't have to be a quarterback or a wide receiver. <laughs> I tell you, long snappers get a lot of love from the fans too. That's right. There's a lot of people here tonight, and uh, you know, I, I'm not not the one to get uh, asked to sign too many things. So it's nice to have these fans out here with so many pictures of me, which is great. Well, and that's great, and you deserve it because you are almost perfect. I mean, the, it, it's, oh, it seems funny, but I, I'm glad not to mention Rick's name a whole lot <laughs> because generally we just assume everything's perfect. That's right. And and I, every now and then I'll say. Remember, it's a three-man uh, operation. That's right. It's Rick Lovato, now it's Braden Mann, and then it's Jake Elliott. Jake is absolutely a premier kicker. Absolutely, and it's been so special to be a part of this special teams unit. All right, it is time now for this week's Penworth Financial Keys to the Game. The key to your financial future is Penworth Financial. Call them today at 267-997-4503. Visit Penworth.com. All right, we can each give a key to the game, and I'm going to give you my first key to the game, and that is give Jalen Hurts the protection that he needs to get the ball to these talented receivers. The, the, well, I don't know if Julio Jones is going to be out there this week, but he is now an eagle. That happened earlier today, but we know all about Devontae Smith, how wonderful he is. We know A.J. Brown. He is just a great, great player. And I, and I put in that receiving group Dallas Goddard, who's tremendous too. So protect Jalen Hurts. That would be my number one key. Billy, do you have an offering? Uh, run the football and keep the Miami offense on the bench. Simple as that. Control the clock and keep Miami's offense on the bench. I Rick, have, you take one. That was going to be my exact uh, same key because keeping the ball out of their hands is – the reason why they're scoring an average of 30 plus points a game so they can't do that if they don't have the ball in their hand so getting swift going moving that ball down the field eating up chunk yards every single time uh we really need to control that clock and obviously put it in the in the end zone because we know that they can get in the end zone so if we can put it in the end zone more than them then we're gonna win this game you know i wonder if there's a a sidebar story to this week's game and I know how focused Jalen Hurts is on one thing, and that is winning and being successful. But he is also a human being, and he is on the other side looking across the sideline at Tua Tagovailoa. Mm -hmm. And Tagovailoa was with him at the University of Alabama That's right. and one time replaced him in the starting lineup. I wonder if there's not a certain little pride factor where Jalen says, this has got to be my night. Yeah, I think you know Jalen's definitely going to be motivated, and I, I don't think that's going to be the main reason. I'm sure they have a great relationship. I'm but, sure they do. But it's uh, yeah, something that you know Jalen wants to prove himself each and every week, no matter who the opponent is, and uh, it's just another opportunity again to prove why we're the best football team in the National Football League. Billy, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, one other thing, we the Eagles have to be 
more productive offensively in the red zone. Yes. They've got to take take the ball into the end zone, not settle for field goals. Well, but, they did this this past week. Both of the touchdowns were from the red zone. One the uh, the one I didn't see <laughs> at the beginning of the game. Yeah. It was it was the quarterback. Well, it was wasn't it wasn't the tush push. It was it was from the three yard line. That's right. And we went away to a break thinking that the Eagles had turned it over to the Jets on the one yard line. It looked like he was stopped. We came back and all of a sudden the officials had huddled and they're raising their arms and the saying that he. He penetrated the plane of the goal line, and it was an Eagles touchdown. Were you as surprised as that as yeah, we were? Yeah, I uh, had gone over to the bench, and uh, I, I'm like, okay, I guess we're not kicking an extra point. I, I thought he had gotten in, but I, it was close, and I thought he was down. Uh, and there wasn't any replays of it at their stadium, so I, I guess we're just turning the ball over. So I go oh, go down to sit on the bench, and uh, I start getting yelled at by Jake and uh, Michael Clay because we scored a touchdown. And I had no – they were still reviewing it at the time, but I had no idea that he had reached that ball the last second uh, on fourth down before he uh, – before his knee went down. So, yeah, crazy. The other, the other of course, Billy, was the pass to, uh, to Swift. Uh, right at the one, he made a great turn. That's right. Looked like a pinball going off of a bumper, and ended up in the end zone. That's right. And we need to, again, like he said, we need to keep doing that in the red zone all the time. We have so much talent down there, so we need to do it, especially a team uh, like Miami. Okay, this is the time where we where we uh, take a look at the other games around the league, and we don't do it by points, just win or loss, and we don't do the Eagles. Chris, do you have a pen that I can borrow? Oh, yeah, a, a, Billy has a pen. All right, first game. This is an interesting game. Uh, how about Washington at the Giants, Bill? Washington. Washington. All right, Rick. I am also going to go Washington for that game. You know what? Giants came close this week. They did. They had a heartbreaker. I think the Giants are going to finally win their second game. That's right. I'm picking the Giants. All right, here's another one. Detroit at Baltimore. I like Detroit. You like Detroit. Rick? I actually like Baltimore here. I, I think the, the Lions haven't been tested enough, and I want to see uh, Lamar, you know, have a game against the Lions. So. Okay. It, it's I picked Detroit. Billy's picked Detroit, and Rick's going with Baltimore. Cleveland at Indianapolis. I'm going to have to go Cleveland here. They played tough game against uh, the 49ers, and I think they can do it again. Billy? I'll take Cleveland. You're taking Cleveland. You know, I think, I really think that Shane Steichen, your former offensive coordinator, has done a very good job there as the head coach. He has. And uh, I'm going to give the edge in this game to Indianapolis. Okay. I know that the, the Browns won with P.J. Walker last week. I don't know that he can lead them twice in a row. And we'll see. But I'm picking Indianapolis. Deshaun Watson could play. Good I have, yeah. you and think, that, that, I'm not sure. That's a different story. But that defense is dangerous. They, they kept yeah. those, the 49. Who was hurt for a lot of that game so all right Pittsburgh at the Rams Billy you take this one first uh, I'll take the Rams the, the Pittsburgh's like the Dow Jones Industrials <laughs> what does that mean up and down oh okay up and down is this week all right but is the is the are they up or are they down this week uh, the Pittsburgh's are gonna, uh, uh, the Rams are gonna win okay Rick I think I'm gonna take the Rams here West Coast game you know for Pittsburgh and the Rams are dangerous so. all right uh, it's three for the Rams Here's another either-or, Atlanta at Tampa Bay. I'm going to go Tampa Bay here. Uh, I think Atlanta has been in some close games, but they just haven't seemed to get the job done. Billy? I'm not sold on Desmond Ritter as their quarterback, so I'm going Tampa Bay as well. That's three for Tampa Bay. Raiders at the Bears. <laughs> Ooh, that's tough. Uh, <laughs> that is tough. If, if, if Fields plays, I'm going to take the Bears. Is Fields hurt? I, he didn't play some of the game last week, so I was confused as to what happened. Oh, we've, we've got to go have a half minute. Okay, Billy. Uh, I'll take the uh, the Raiders. Okay. Uh, Chargers at Kansas City. We all three for Kansas, Kansas City? Kansas yep. City, yeah. Okay. And the last one, I think we will all agree, San Francisco will beat Minnesota. I'll sure. take San Francisco. Yep, okay. They're not going to lose two in a row. All right. We're out of time. Billy Wardell, thank you. Chris Ermer, you've been a great producer. Rick Lovato, you're one of the great long snappers of the game. We thank you for joining us, meeting all of your fans, and go crush those dolphins on Sunday. That's right. We'll all do. right. This is Merrill Reese. Thank you so much for joining us. I will see you on Sunday night with Mike Quick. 
and have a great week. Good night, everyone. And one more thing. Go Phillies! <laughs>been listening to the pro football report presented by bcwsa tonight's show is an exclusive presentation of 1490 am as well as 107.3 fm and heard around the world at wbcb1490.com